So we, I'm I'm Garrett. (laughs) This is one of our. That was a hell of an intro to this. Yeah. (laughs) I guarantee that's going to get cut. Um. (laughs) At least not the, the, the tail end will be good. Yeah. Be included. Cause that's Um, that's a good sagu. So I feel like this is one where I'm like, this is going to be a short and it's going to wind up being a full length episode, but this is one that we are pre-recording. So the point of though, I think the mama says is just like, it's like a one source Right. Researching. Like, I'm or not like, not, I honestly didn't even research this. This is just like right. what I do. So that to me is like what makes it them easier for us to do. Yeah. These are like our little bite size, yeah. easier bite to size crank out. <laughs> yes. Not for you. Sorry. Yeah, you get to suffer. You get the mouthful. Welcome. <laughs> I can't believe Katie let that one go and didn't roast me for saying mouthful. Well, you didn't say like a mouthful of jizz. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Thank you though. <laughs> Sorry, mom. So happy with her. <laughs> I feel like my mom stopped listening a few episodes ago at this point. She's like, I just, I just can't. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so you'll probably be hearing this sometime during summer travel season, which is good yeah. timing. This is a traveling with ADHD episode. So, Ooh. um, and this is also me living vicariously through you because I will not be traveling anytime soon. <laughs> traveled last summer you jerk i did no but i mean like going forward i won't be traveling anytime soon yeah um so we kind of went through a phase where we traveled a bunch for a few years um and i think in in hindsight there's been things that i've learned each trip that i'm like oh, i have to remember that next time and i because i have adhd never zero percent of the time remember Mm -hmm. um so one thing i will at the onset of this episode that i personally do not do because i forget is to keep a, like, a travel journal of places that we went, things that we learned. Um, I did that when I did that month-long tour in Europe when mm -hmm. I was in college. I have a travel journal in Mm -hmm. my pile of other journals that I've kept throughout my life. Yeah, but you're a journaler. I'm not a journaler. I haven't actually left written in my own current journal in quite a while. And I keep, like, it's sitting on my coffee table, and I keep looking at it like, oh, I gotta write some stuff down. Like It's looking at you like... (laughs) Yeah, I'm like... (laughs) God, there's just so much that I got to write down. Doing that See, ADHD that's, thing. Where yes. I'm like, oh, it's you get overwhelmed and then you don't do it and you avoid it. Um, so <clears throat> I tried to break this into like some different sections, but ultimately it's all going to, you know, fucking overlap and be a mess. Cool. So, you know, like I normally deliver. I It's funny because like I listen back in all these different episodes. I always give this like warning at the beginning, like, a lot of these things are interconnected. I'm going to try to go through it in a logical way. So that's this too. I did um, that in my, um, by the time this comes out, they'll have heard the essential oils episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this might seem repetitive. And then I was like, but every time I listen to an episode personally of any podcast, yeah. I'll find myself rewinding to like re-get the information. Because yeah. they'll be like, this is from blah, blah, blah. Give the information. And they don't say the name of the thing again. And I'm like, yeah. oh, but I, mean, I needed the title. Which is one of the times when like I do really well with like those carousels. Mm-hmm. on Instagram so yeah. I can like swipe back and forth and and like refresh my memory because it is the memory of a goldfish. So <clears throat> um prepping for a trip. I am a nerd and love Excel. So as does my spouse. So nah I know I was gonna say nine times out of ten, a hundred percent of the time every trip uh involves an Excel document. We travel, uh we track like, you know, it Initially, it becomes like anticipated expenses. I think airfare is going to be this, or hotel or Airbnb are going to be this. Um, but I think also we usually, for like bigger trips, because we are very cool, um, we usually wind up printing and laminating the um, plan and where we're staying and confirmation numbers so that Do we you have also everything. punch a hole through it and make it into a necklace. No. <laughs> It just goes in our bags. <laughs> but now that you mentioned but it, you know I what? <laughs> um, and we do like the tour guides that are holding up the laminated thing. Group A. <laughs> Speaking as someone who went on a Viking River cruise and was mortified the whole time, yes, that is what it was like. They would call it the lollipop that they were holding up, and all of the Europeans would laugh at you. And we'll get there. Um, so. <laughs> I do make an effort to make sure I have a rough idea of the kind of layout of things, of the area, of how to get around, like things to become familiar with, also events that are going on. Do you do this only when you're traveling internationally? 
Um, no, I would say I do that no matter what. Um, cause like if you do a little bit of research, sometimes you'll find out, for example, um, we stayed in the old part of, um, uh, Montreal, which is like Europe and it is impossible to park anywhere mm -hmm. and driving is horrendous. So that you was, you know, one. that that's an international location for us though, right? Yeah, I guess that would be <laughs> to me in my brain. I'm like, it's not that far. <laughs> so my brain's like, no, that's it's not that far. Heading that comment out um, of the past that we've got. That's a, that's a good point, Katie. What um, about like when you go to DC? Cause I know you go to DC. A lot. Um, also a place that's horrendous to drive. Um, yeah, I think it's good to, or at least have an idea of like things that are where things are that you want to do in relation to one another. And okay, is it going to be feasible to drive? Is it going to be feasible to walk? Um, there's, I know you don't like it, but I'm going to reference it anyway. <laughs> Friends? Yes. Fuck! <laughs> But they're in London, and Joey is trying to find all of the monuments that he wants to see. Mm -hmm. And so he's, like, getting disoriented, and he has his map out, and he's like, I, I don't know where I am. I have to go into the map. And Chandler's like, what does that mean? <laughs> into the map. And he put it on the ground <laughs> and, like, stepped on it to, like, oh. figure out where he was. <laughs> Cut to me literally hiding around the block because I don't want to be seen with the person going in the map. Yeah, so Chandler left him because he was being embarrassed. Yep. And uh, then he met uh, Fergie, uh, Princess Fergie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not the singer. Every I totally I didn't think that. I don't know why. My London, London Bridge, wanna go down. You thought I was done with karaoke, didn't you? I did. <laughs> um, I also recommend, oh, like, like one example is, you know, making sure you're checking things that are going on locally. We went to Amsterdam and it was during the, we specifically did it. So we were there during this light festival oh, cool. where you can like do a tour of the canals and you can see all these different like displays that all these different groups do, which did was very Did you see anybody cool. fall into the canals? No, oh. but it was an intrusive thought the whole time. <laughs> like don't go too close because you might Yeah, there's fall like in. no railings. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's... They put a lot of trust on humans and your self-preservation. Europe in general, there's just a lot of trust. If anybody's been to the Cliffs of Moher, yeah, there's you can a, just go. There's a very small railing, and then when you go five feet down, there is no railing, and it's just open air. There's like a sign every mm, hundred. Like, meters. don't be a dummy. Yeah, like yeah. underneath this is rocks. So yep, it'll hurt. An ocean. Bye. Um, <laughs> and another thing that I do find really helpful is I will go on YouTube and watch like travel vlogs. Because oh. there's been some times where I've been like, oh, we should go here, and then I watch a travel vlog, and I'm like. I, that does not seem like something I would enjoy I know at all. people do that a lot for Disney trips because there's, like, oh, Disney yeah. travel vloggers who are, like, super, like, um, like, savants when it comes to Disney mm -hmm. and, like, figuring out how to, like, make your fast pass thing work mm -hmm. and, like, get into all the rides you want to get into and how to do that and yeah. which, which restaurants to make reservations at and which ones to skip yeah. and, like, what – for your like age group of your kids and um they're super exhausting intense. just to think about it is and i wish i had known before i went to disney with my mom and my brother yeah. though because like the last time we had gone to disney was 1994 right so right, it's a right. little bit different <laughs> uh <laughs> yes but uh yeah so i wish i had done that because then like after the fact i was like oh shit <laughs> Yeah. Like, there's like a wealth of information out there. Yeah. It just doesn't occur to me to like go to YouTube. And and like I feel like it's also helpful to watch like as somebody goes through the motions of something. Yes. Um, it is helpful to see and and then they'll point out things like, Oh, I did this and it was horrible and this yeah. is why. So I think there's definitely or like I'm also I'm an anxious person. So if I can see something play out and I kind of then know what to expect, it immediately makes me less anxious about that thing. Like reviews on Chewy. Yes, like About reviews on Chewy. Tune into Patreon. <laughs> um, we also don't tend to travel like during the peak of summer. We tend to go off season, either early fall or um, late spring, just to kind of miss some of the crowds. And it helps with like work schedules, I feel like, with that too. Like I never have to worry when I request my vacation in early September right. that there's going to be a conflict with like someone in my team and right. my, my shit won't get it. Right, like in the middle of summer. Yeah. And I also recommend, I think, like, one of my biggest travel tips, especially if we're doing, like, longer trips or international trips, I always schedule it so that we're getting home on a Friday before a long weekend. 
minutes just to give us like that extra time to like get the grocery shopping done and all of that. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, I always forget about the groceries. I always think of laundry. Yes. And like in a perfect world before we go, I love to wash the sheets so that when I come Mm. home, I can like shower because I like showering when I get home from a trip and then like get into clean sheets. Um, I'll be honest. I don't always succeed with that it totally depends on how much time off i have and how anxious i am Mm -hmm. if i'm actually gonna be able to get all because i do like to come home and like have a clean slate and not have to worry about like any mess that i've left from before i left yeah um so i do tend to with that kind of excel spreadsheet lay out a schedule where i only i'll pick like one to two things to do a day okay so I think sometimes it's tempting when you go someplace to like, oh my God, there's all these things and pack a million things in and then you're like dead because you've yeah. overdone it. Yeah. I would get super burnt out. Like yes. even at Disney, we just did one park a day. Yeah. And then once we were done with the park, we just went back to our room and chilled. Yes. Like- Which like you have to. I mean, it's, I've done both and I've had trips where you know, we would do an eight-hour drive, and then we're, like, packing things in the whole time we're driving and packing things in when we get there. And I'm just, like, that is not my speed. Um, and I don't enjoy it. And then I come home, and I'm, like, completely wiped out, which you are anyway from traveling. Yeah, actually, I was just talking with my um, – the lady that I share a garage with at my apartment complex yesterday. We talked about, like – because I let her know that I would be moving, but that my brother would be staying at my place for a little bit. So, like, his car would be in my spot and da-da-da. And so we were talking and she was telling me how like when she was younger, she traveled all through Europe with her sister for a month. And um, she's like Southeast Asian, Mm -hmm. I'd say. Like she has a a thicker accent, Um, but she's this very nice old lady. And um, she's like, oh, no, I went to Germany and Italy and did all this and that and the other. But she said that um, like she used a tour company because then she didn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was talking to her and I was like, you know, I don't like to have to like hyper stress out about like yes. missing my train every time I have to make a connection or like whatever. I, like, I still want my vacation to be a vacation. Like mm-hmm. I don't like once I take this huge trip, first of all, something like that, like you're gone for like three weeks, you have no more money left yep. when you come back. So totally broke. <laughs> that is the end of the vacations for the year. Yes. But, like, I don't want to come back from the – like, I don't want to need a vacation from my vacation. Yes. And it and it really does, like, wipe you out. And there there's pluses and minuses. Like, I think depending on what you're looking for, like, doing it with a company – we've done it both ways. We've done, like, self-guided things that we use a company to, like, set some stuff up for us. We've done some fully tour company and some where we've done it completely independently. So it's definitely, like, what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, We tend to go into it with, like – an A list and B list of things that, like we absolutely 100% want to do. Um, and then a B list. Cause sometimes like Google's wrong and something's closed or. And depending where you're going, I really like just kind of wandering. So one of the things that we do is we do a lot of things on foot, which I talk about like in pack when I get to the oh, section okay. on packing. Um, but I just think you see and experience a place so differently when you're doing it on foot, which is why I, I don't love doing tour companies um, because it is nice to like have the freedom to be able to kind of meander and get lost a little bit. Um, But I think definitely having some backups of like other things and knowing just offhand, like knowing roughly where they are in relation um, and just like not overloading or, or we'll do it where like there's a morning thing and an afternoon or evening thing and that's it. Cause, cause you may walk and be like, like that i don't want to go do that thing later i want to do that instead yeah um or you you just happen upon something um and also it's gonna take longer than you think to get around Mm. and to find a place to eat speaking from experience also (laughs) i didn't include it i don't think in here but pick (laughs) what and where you're going to eat before you leave where you're staying Mm. if you're at a hotel or an airbnb and you're really hungry pick the place you're going and go straight there (laughs) because we always do that lie where we're like we'll find something along the way and then you cut to me having a meltdown someplace and it's just not great yeah Um, that was one of the things that i warned pk about when we first met yeah was like if i tell you that i'm hungry yeah it is not 
time for you to dawdle. There's a window. One of his friends, like, is notorious for, like, oh, okay, we're hungry. Like, where should we eat? Oh, I don't know about them. I don't like them. I don't, nope. I'll, I'll just find, you know, it's fine. Nope. Like, and I'm like, no, just, I, I'm picking. Yeah. Like, I've, <laughs> like, I told him, I was like, if that starts around me, I will, like, just, F, like, you might hear from them about how I'm bitchy, but, like, I'm not sitting around with this. No. Let's talk about it for an hour and a half. No. And that's local. <laughs> I know Ooh. where all the restaurants are. Yeah, no, I can't. No. <laughs> like traveling, absolutely can't not. and won't. I would fight them. Yeah, no, it's it's terrible, and we've done it before, and I've fully had a meltdown. Um, <laughs> I also recommend something that we tend to do, like at the very beginning of a trip, is some kind of like tour, which also will help you familiarize yourself. Um, I do try and find like a weird tour to do. So we did like one of the less popular. Um, we were in Amsterdam. It was like. Um, these damn boat guys or something was the name of the company. And it was definitely like a less, it wasn't one of the big fancy ones, but it yeah. was way more fun. Huh. Um, and it like allows it you to, to be with that name. Yeah. It can't oh, be yeah. boring. Well, and that was, they, that like their website was funny and oh. stuff. So I was like, oh, that's who I want to go with. Cause like, that's going to be more fun. And it gave us a good idea of like the layout and kind of where things were located. Yeah. Um, or sometimes you'd go past something and be like, oh, I thought I wanted to do that, but I don't want to do that. Um, we also did that in um, Edinburgh. We did a ghost tour, which was Ooh. very cool. We did it did at you night. you go to the, like, tunnels? We did. Oh, um, so je- I want to do that so bad. It's real creepy. I told PK I wanted to do that, and he thought I was lying because I'm so afraid of scary movies. <laughs> yep. And we also went to Greyfriar Abbey. Um, so in the city of Edinburgh, because it's, like, on a hill – they kind of just, like, kept moving the bodies in the graveyard. So at one point, he was, like, we were on a hill. And he basically told us that the hill was just made of old old bones. Um, and he was, like, I want you to guess how many bodies we're standing on top of right now. And everybody was, like, that's a weird game. Yeah. Everybody's, like, I don't like this game. Um, <laughs> my biggest beef with that tour was the guy had very long legs. He looked a lot like the um, – Like somebody from a – from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas? I'm thinking more like R2, not R2-D2, C-3PO. C-3PO. But there's also like a movie with a tall, thin grasshopper. Was it James and the Giant Peach? Um, Wasn't there a tall, skinny grasshopper in that? I don't know if there was a grasshopper in that, but there was definitely tall grasshoppers in A Bug's Life. Yeah, he had like a, this one had an accent, like a British accent maybe. But that's how, that's what this guy reminded me of. But anyway, he walked very fast and I have... A very hard time keeping up with somebody with long legs. Mm-hmm. Um, we also did that in New Orleans. We did a ghost tour, which was very cool. Do recommend. So um, between the two, which was cooler? Just to really the one in Edinburgh was listeners. like <laughs> <laughs> the one in Edinburgh was definitely a little bit less like corny. Okay. Um, he was dressed up, which at first I was like, I'm not going to be seen in public with somebody dressed up. Um, but it was super informational, and he told like cool stories and i think that one was a little bit better um but the one in new orleans was also good. oh yeah there is a tall grasshopper person oh wait in um james and the giant peach yeah let me let me see him there on the far oh yeah that's what he looked like yeah yeah but he had on like a, a some kind of military uniform. he wasn't wearing a, a morning jacket <laughs> he wasn't no weird weird <laughs> um so packing for a trip Obviously, it depends what time of year you go. I, and I know we've, like, mentioned this on the pod before, my obsession with um, neutrals that I can mix and match. Mm -hmm. I pack the same way. And I pretty much have, like, a standard packing list that I use for every trip. Um, So when I'm packing, I kind of, like, walk through my day. I'm like, okay, so I need, like, skincare items and Mm. shower items and deodorant and, like, when I'm getting dressed, I need underwear and bras and this and this. So I kind of like walk Society. through it that way. Society. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I have to keep them restrained. Um, I do tend to bring one small purse that can fit inside my travel backpack. So I'll put like my documents or something in that small purse that goes inside my backpack. Um, a backpack. And then I ha- we got those away suitcases. Mm-hmm which I definitely recommend. They're really great suitcases. 
Um, and they also oh, wait sponsor us. <laughs> oh yeah, sponsor us. I would love that. They, oh, you lit up. <laughs> those suitcases nestle. All of them are des- designed specifically to nestle inside one another. So, like, we got one that's like a universal carry on, and we've got like gotten them over time. Yeah. Um, and then we have one that's like a good. I would say it's good for like a week long trip, and then. I think my spouse also got one in that size. And then we got, like, a big one that is hard to use because it's very easy to make it way too much. Mm. And you have to pay overweight fees. Um, But, yeah, those suitcases are the best. And they're hard shell. And they come in, like, unique colors. So I feel like it's so easy for me to find my suitcase, Mm. like, on the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because they're, like – I mean, they're an ugly color. They're, like, this awful, like, fleshy tan color. But – very few people are going to be picking that ugly color. <laughs> um, Is that why you picked it or was it just on sale? <laughs> um, I didn't want – they had like – they have more color options now, but I didn't want a black suit. I mean, I, mm. I love a good black bag, but I wanted it to be easy to find. Yeah. So I figured that would be one of the easier I got PK a black one for Christmas and – um, all I could think was how I'm going to have to put like pink and teal ribbons on it. Right. When we fly. Anyway. Right. But so it just makes it easier to find it on the belt. Like I can be really far away and I'm like, Oh, there's my bag. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that helps, um, depending on the season. And I, I do really try and like my suitcase is hot pink, by the way, you didn't ask, but your um, what, what were you mixing up? It was Oh, my bikini and suitcase. My, I want a pink suitcase, and I meant swimsuit. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's what I was about to be like. Is it your swimsuit as a or toddler? <laughs> Just to be clear, guys, <laughs> this was not recent. This was not like last summer that I was screaming about wanting a pink suitcase, and I couldn't Having find a pink a meltdown. <laughs> um, yeah, mine's just a plushy color. Depending on the season, and like I, I, we were mentioning earlier, I do like to see things on foot. That's how I prefer to sightsee. So. I try and make sure I have, like, a pair of, depending on the season, sandals or boots, uh, a comfortable pair of sneakers, and then, like, a pair of flats. So, not me out here trying to get sponsorship, but um, flats, I have Rothy's because they're super lightweight the and they're drivers are comfortable. so nice. Yes. Yeah. And they're comfortable to wear for, like, longer periods of time. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about, like... I can, I know I can throw them in the wash. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I always travel with a pair of Rothy's, um, all birds for sneakers are, oh, they're just like the, <laughs> they're just the best. And I am a sneaker person. Like I have so many pairs of white sneakers. She really does. It shouldn't be like allowed. A nurse from the fifties. <laughs> I used to roll my eyes at my mom. My mom would be like, I'm telling you a pair of loafers and a pair of white sneakers. And I'd be like, okay, mom. And now loafers and white sneakers are kind of my thing. So um, lots of white sneakers, but really the Allbirds. And they're super lightweight. Um, And then I can throw them in the wash when I get home. And they're, like, good as new. Um, And they're comfortable to wear all day. And I can wear them, like, with pants. I can wear them with shorts, with dresses. Um, I never have packed any kind of heel traveling because I won't wear them. And it's just going to take up space in my suitcase. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I am not very good at being like an ultra light packer. Me neither. Because I want options and I hate the feeling of being away without options. Um, although I, I have gotten a lot better because I am too lazy to lift a heavy suitcase. Yeah. So my options will be, I'll have one nice outfit, Mm -hmm. um, and which is usually like, slacks and a blouse of some sort and then even for that like I don't necessarily bring heels but I'll bring a like nicer sandal like Mm -hmm. flat sandal Mm -hmm. um so that first of all it doesn't take up space but second of all that can also kind of like dress up a more casual outfit yep um and and vice versa you can also wear during the day more casually if you need to correct yeah so um not necessarily for like walking long distances usually mm-hmm. for those, but it can like get me through. So I bring options like that now as opposed mm-hmm. to like, and I still end up trying to bring options where it's like even my fancy stuff, I can wear like the most utilitarian of bras. <laughs> yes. Like, and that's one thing I do emphasize is like, I only will pack items that I know are comfortable. 
Yeah. If there's something that like fits awkwardly or isn't comfortable or yeah, the reality is if I don't wear it too at tight home, in one I'm spot, never wearing it right. When I travel. Um, and the other thing that I'll do too is I'll try and to get like more use out of something when I pack it is I'll try and wear it to like dinner one night mm-hmm. and then wear it for like another yeah. out during the day so that I can kind of get two wears out of something where I'm maybe not necessarily like sweating through it. And like realistically, guys, like the the paparazzi's not following you around. You can no. wear outfits again. Yes. And I feel like, especially in Europe. Um, My only thing is if I sweat through it, I don't want to wear it again. Well, that's, so when I did that month long trip, it was like uh, two weeks in and I just dropped my laundry off at a wash and fold. Yeah. And just picked it up a few hours later. Yeah. And that was it. You know, it wasn't like exorbitantly expensive, but at least then I had like my staple items, like my jeans and all that stuff were like mm-hmm. the fibers were reset and right. like whatever. I didn't have to worry about it. And it's- I did – um when we went on that, that Viking cruise, I got these like – um like you know the laundry sheets that are have mm-hmm. detergent i got like i tore those up into like small bits and there was a couple times where like i would wash a couple shirts like in the sink and then hang them up outside yeah to let them dry and that was good because then at least if i was like sweaty and something that's something that i would definitely do now mm-hmm. that i a, a girl that was on my tour did that she all she had for a whole month was a backpack like a huge L.O. Bean backpack. Like so much respect, but I can't do it. Oh, it was nuts. She was also very goth, so everything yeah. she wore was all black. Mm. Um, but but similar concept to the neutrals. Very similar. Everything yeah. can mix and match. And um, yeah, she just washed her stuff like every other day. Yeah. So whoever her roommate was, I don't know if they were okay with it or not. But, <laughs> Too late. But, <laughs> that being said, it's not like you're wa- you're hanging a whole load of laundry dry. You're hanging right. a couple of items. Things, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all she had. Like, yeah, the, I'm not, the bus driver can't. was always confused when she was like, no, I'm no, that's it. On. Yeah, I can't, I can't like, I can, I can be efficient and I definitely make sure that like, okay, I have this and I can wear it with this, this or this, depending on the weather. Like I'll bring, you know, like a, a couple of maybe like a cardigan and then like a pullover sweater that are like maybe gray and black mm-hmm. and like a scarf. So if I need to like differentiate something or I want it to look different or whatever, um, or, you know, I, I usually travel with like a denim jacket. So that if it's chilly, I can bring it and I can throw on another layer, but. Which is the tricky part of traveling in the off season is that you are more susceptible. Right. You're more likely to encounter like crazy temperature swings where you'll need a light sweater and a heavy sweater. Yes. <laughs> Cause it could be 50 or 80. Like we're dealing with this week. <laughs> don't even, don't even get me started. Um, another thing that's worth doing is checking to see what, like, especially if you're staying in one place, what, um, like facilities they have available. So like if they have a hair dryer, don't pack. I mean, I don't know that I normally pack a hair dryer, but in case like you're somebody who that's important to, mm-hmm. you know, travel with, um, or like shampoo and conditioner, if you're not like committed to one type of shampoo and conditioner, if they've got one in the thing, you can save yourself like. Or just stop by a pharmacy and get it when you're there. So at least you're not – and get – you know, you can get the smaller containers of it and you don't – you know, you're not wasting space in your own suitcase or wasting weight because those are non-negotiably heavy. heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the thought of like something opening. (sighs) Yeah, that's right. Um, I will take um, a little bit of saran wrap. And I'll, like, put it under a lid and then screw the lid on so that oh. things don't leak. I just put it all in a Ziploc yeah. bag. Yeah. Um, so when you're actually, like, the the actual process of traveling, and this is definitely, I would say, probably geared more towards international travel, but it would work for, like, any, like, long trips. Um, I make sure that's one time where I am, like, pretty efficient is, like, a carry-on bag. Mm, um, I just yeah. don't put a ton in there. Like, I have a very hard time listen. I can't, like, listen to music while I'm traveling because the – especially, like, plane travel. The plane is so loud yeah. that I feel like I have them, like, blasted and then I'm, like, overstimulated. So I tend to bring something to read. I do have something to listen to that I usually don't listen to. Um, I use that as a way to – I take, like, a one of the bigger sweaters or jackets I'm going to bring and I put it in my carry-on so that I'm saving space in my suitcase – and I have something because I inevitably get cold on mm-hmm. a plane. Um, 
I also bring like wet ones wipes. Yeah. So that when I sit down, I can do like a quick and like usually I feel like they are cleaning planes in between. Yeah. But I just feel like generally it's kind of grimy. So I'll like. So I love those deodorant wipes or like Lumi makes Mm -hmm. um, like acidified body wipes Mm -hmm. that are unscented and they're great for like kind of just like cleaning freshening yourself. up that's yeah. a good that would be a good thing to include in this because i've never un- used those and yeah i got it in like a in my order from them once it was like a like a sample pack it was like yeah. 15 wipes but i've used it like after work before going to the gym just mm-hmm. to like have a uh a baseline <laughs> after sitting at my desk all day right, and being right, right. gross um so that i'm not like extra gnarly at the gym yeah. um or working out and uh yeah, those are also good. I recommend them. Or like I said, they have like deodorant wipes. Yeah. Or just put a stick of deodorant in your bag. Because that's I usually will bring like basic hygiene items so that when I land, I can freshen up. And sometimes on overseas flights especially, they'll give you a set that like has mm-hmm. like a toothbrush and toothpaste and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but also I, those Colgate wisps are good for Oh, yeah. That. Those are helpful for um, that too. Yeah. Like if you don't – like if you have that everything in your like hang-up toiletry bag mm-hmm. in your main suitcase – you can do like wisps and like the little travel thing of deodorant and the wipes mm-hmm. and like those little things that like yes they're using more plastic but like mm-hmm. this is the purpose they're for <laughs> like, right and and it it is nice like to be able to land especially if you have something to do mm-hmm. or additional traveling to do when you land before like I go through and get my luggage and everything I'll take like ten minutes in the bathroom and just like. Because so often, especially international, like when if we're flying to Europe, you land at like nine a.m. and you can't check into your hotel till like three. Right. So you're and a lot of the time you're traveling to your hotel, so it's definitely worth. I also will bring like a fresh T-shirt and an extra pair of underwear. Yeah. Just so that I can like swab out my underwear, swab out my T-shirt. I don't feel like grimy. I feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, Which definitely like can give you more energy i feel like when you feel clean yes like like a little refresh yeah um and also make sure that you're putting any um, medications that you're traveling with especially prescription medication in your carry-on in case your luggage gets lost yeah and make sure that you're traveling um with like your prescriptions in the actual prescription bottles yep um that have your name on them and the type Mm -hmm. of prescription it is and i'll put it in my day counter and then i bring the bottles with me so that Um, i don't have to worry about doing that while i'm on yeah because then it can create a problem if it looks like you're just a drug mule (laughs) in a little am pm divider (laughs) and also like make sure if that's in your carry-on and you get flagged by tsa or whatever that you're watching them review your medications so that mm. potentially, especially if you're listening to this and you have ADHD and you're on a controlled substance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, just to make sure that that's not being taken mm-hmm. um, by somebody and uh, like just verify like you're, you're like entitled to account. ask yeah. for somebody to like join them in this and just say like, look, I have controlled substances in there. I have a prescription for them, yep. but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and I get them back. Don't take my shit. Yeah. Um, I think it's also good to know ahead of time how you're planning on getting from the airport or train station you're in, like, to where you're going to be staying. Yeah. You know, know ahead of time, like, maybe the airport doesn't allow Uber or, you know, maybe the place that you're in doesn't allow Uber, so you have to use, um, like, a regular taxi service. And do you need cash? And so just, like, have things like that in mind before you're at the point where you have to find it and you're jet lagged. Which I guess is where those travel travel vlogs come in. <laughs> also, yeah, they're also helpful for that. <laughs> um, and I do try and make sure like each day when we're like in and out that I'm leaving with like the most minimal items possible. Um, did I include? I did, okay. Um, so when we get home, I try and make sure before we leave – I write myself somewhere, whether I put it in my notes app on my phone or like I usually travel with like a little pad of paper. I make like a brief grocery list so that when we're on our way home, we can stop and pick up like the essential items so that I don't have to like immediately go out and do that the next morning. I might be able to wait a day. Um, I also travel with packing cubes. Mm. So when I'm 
prepping the night before coming back, all of my dirty clothes get put all together into packing cubes so that when I get home, I'm not going through the whole bag to try and figure out what has to get washed, what doesn't. I can literally take like three packing cubes and just dump them right into the wash. Yeah. Because I know exactly what's dirty and what's clean. Um, And I also am one of those people literally walk in. I bring my suitcase in. It goes right in front of the washer. And I immediately divide up like what needs to go where. Um, Like I like my shoes and like any accessories and perfume or anything like that is all going to have to go upstairs so it all goes in a laundry basket i am medium good at doing that (laughs) i don't necessarily like put everything away but i at least take it out of the suitcase and put the suitcase away no i don't do that i (laughs) will absolutely not uh typically leave my suitcase in the middle of the floor so that i have to step over it every time i walk past it and then i'll eventually get to it my spouse thinks i'm a psychopath for doing this but when pk went to um Colorado for a week that time his Mm -hmm. suitcase stayed on his side table in his living room for like months (sighs) (laughs) that just gave me so much anxiety for a minute but I'm also when I'm packing stuff I'm packing like everyday things that I'm using on a regular basis well and I got him packing cubes with his suitcase for Christmas they are like the most We'll see what happens. Clutch. I fit so much more in my suitcase with those. Yeah, I they're so mandatory. They're amazing. Um, Like ten out of ten, I recommend having those. They're on my list of must-have travel items. Um, What else is on your list of must-have travel? um, So yeah. Anyway, I I unpack just on like a high level. I don't necessarily. I'm not like great with it, but I do it on like a utility unpack. So must-have items: Uh, a neck pillow. I used to think it was the dumbest thing when I was doing like smaller trips, like these people with these fucking neck pillows. I can't, it's. Do you it's, use an inflatable one? I've used both. Um, I'll be honest. I tend to wind up buying one at the airport and paying a premium because I can't find mine. And I know I have a million of them. And every time I clean something out, I find like three neck like pillows. Like with my fucking charging cord this yes. morning. <laughs> yes. Like I know I have so many of them and I do have an inflatable one. And if you're like tight on space, it's definitely a good way to go because you can just like and pump it up um yeah <laughs> loop earplugs mm. or like noise canceling of some sort um because i do get like overstimulated when i travel especially when i'm traveling hungry and tired the sound of a plane puts me right to sleep though does it oh my god yeah i just feel like my ears are ringing oh it's like like brown noise at like the perfect pitch or something i don't know yeah. it like like especially like i can like Usually what I do is, like, because I play Candy Crush, some <laughs> half boomer, but I'll, like, buy the, like, whatever pack from them and, like, spend actual money Yeah. so that I have, like, unlimited lives and all that shit, and I'm, yeah. like, I mean, I h- never do that unless I'm traveling, Yeah. but that way, because I know I'll have my phone on me, Yep. and that way I don't have to take anything else out of my freaking carry-on, and between that and then the noise, I go right to sleep. Um, I think having one of the things I do put in my, um, backpack is always an eye mask. I always travel with an eye mask, but like one that like really blocks the light Mm -hmm. because man, on a plane, like, especially if you're, I am generally able to sleep on a plane. Um, having an eye mask is just like, it makes such a difference. Especially if it's not either a red eye or an international flight, like an international flights, they dim the lights in the cabin. Yep. But not in regular flights. Even then, if somebody's sitting right next to you and they turn their light on, an eye mask all the way. You just uh, shit right all over your spouse there, didn't you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Somebody sits in the no, seat he next doesn't. To me. No, but like I've had people like are right in front of me. Some guy with their light, and I am. I think I've used the parakeet comparison before. Yeah. Like if there's light, I can't. I can't. Um. So yeah, I always, always, always have a sleep mask. Packing cubes. Um, also compression socks. Mm. Um, I know like I tend to get kind of like swollen when I fly. So I, th- I always have a pair of compression socks like in my carry on to throw on. Do you take your shoes off once you're in your seat? Um, usually I am not the person that like puts my feet up on something or, but I'll like, if I have comfortable shoes that are easy to slide in and off, I'll slide them. Like, all birds, I'll slide off because mm-hmm. I can, like, very easily slip them back on. I think it depends how long the flight is. Yeah. If it's more than a couple hours, I probably will. Um, a luggage scale. 
because there is nothing worse than being at the check-in gate and you realize your luggage weighs too much. So, <laughs> and then having to do that thing where you have to like take things out of one suitcase and put them in another suitcase or like pay extra fees. So it is worth paying for a dumb little luggage scale and saving yourself the chaos of trying to like redistribute weight or paying additional money. Um, yeah. Having an international credit card to travel with. So you're using less cash. Um, most, at, like at this point, like most places take credit cards. Yeah. It's still good to ask uh, to make sure that they take them. And make sure you let your credit card company know that you're traveling internationally mm -hmm. and like the dates that you're going to be there. Especially if you have like a debit card because that's always where I've gotten snacks. My Discover card, they're like, they will immediately call me if they think something's weird. Catherine, where are you? <laughs> yeah, basically. It's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's great. Well, no, because like sometimes you forget. Um, yeah. I mean, they'll do it if I go to like Massachusetts to shop sometimes. Yeah, that's nice. Um, my old debit card was literally cloned, used at three o'clock in the morning in Miami and they spent $700. Do you think my bank, I don't know, didn't allow the payment to go through? Nope. We had to wait for it to clear in order to even be able to report it as fraud. It was a whole thing. That's weird. Yeah. I was real. Oof. I was a beast with that. That really made me mad. I was not sure making a lot of money. Beauty. <laughs> tune into patreon <laughs> um it was the fact that like you're allowing this person who clearly stole my credit card at three o'clock in the morning to spend seven hundred dollars of my money yeah oh um anyway international credit card <laughs> um also a crossbody purse you are less likely to have your purse stolen and it's very easy to then pull your purse in front of you I do, actually, right before we recorded this, I asked your spouse if he would stop being my friend if I started wearing a fanny pack. Because they're like... He wouldn't all, because now they're I wear bags. one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Or a waist bag. I keep seeing them everywhere and I'm like, yeah. hey, but like, even if you're wearing it like diagonally across you, it's that just makes secure. so much more sense yep. and so easy to get to. Yes. Like, I'm not catching it on shit as I walk by stuff. I, I got no how wide I am. like a little one from Uniqlo for like... I don't know, $10 or something stupid. I use that thing. I can fit so much in it. And depending on where I am, like I can just swing it around in front of me, which is why I like the crossbody bag mm -hmm. because I can just pull it around in front of me. And that's what I did um, the last time we were in Europe. I have like a, it's almost like a, not a mini backpack, but it's like a mix of that and a sling bag. So you can do that or you can just like pull it around the front. And then have it, like, right in front of you, which is way more secure because especially, I mean, depending on where you're going. Yeah. Pickpocketing and stuff or purse. purse. I, I saw somebody's purse get snatched in D.C. one of the times we were there. So totally happens. Oh, for sure. And it's that thing of, um, you know, having something that zips closed mm -hmm. and, like, not just, uh, like, a flap or something. Yep. Um, you can just slip your hand into it. better. And, uh. <laughs> Sorry. When I was in high or yeah, so in high school we did like a tour of Europe with my English club. We did London and Paris, and we were at Versailles, and there was a like family of four that they also put into our group. Mm -hmm. But it was like a mom and a dad, and like a grandma and the son, and the son was like eight. Mm -hmm. and we all had our like EF tour backpacks that are mm -hmm. bright orange and blue. Oh, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I was 17. I oh, I mean, we got them for Viking, and I was like, absolutely. Um, but we all had them, and we're, like, waiting outside, and um, it was kind of, like, overcast, and his grandma, like, went to zip it up and was like, what did you have in your backpack? And he was like, oh, it's just my umbrella. Somebody had taken his umbrella, like, opened it and took his umbrella. Like, they don't care. They're just going to go for it. They're just grabbing whatever's yeah. in there. Yeah. And, that, like, I'm a huge backpack fan. Like, I use a backpack every day for work. I would much rather use a backpack traveling. But realistically, I know how easy it is to just unzip somebody's backpack and grab something. So. You can do, like, those little locks. Yeah. Which even then, like, ADHD, I'm going to lose the key. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. I'm going to get really mad about having to unlock it. So I just do little sling bags and it is, it's so much more secure. Plus I think it's good. Like I said about like only carrying what you absolutely need. I'm looking at my schedule for the day and I'm like, all right, oh, it's going to be a little chilly. Like I'll bring a jacket. 
Um, one of the things I do always bring with me is, you know, those reusable bags that like fold up really small. Mm -hmm. I always travel with one of those because then like, if you want to like go out shopping or something, you have a little bag that you can just like quick open up. that doesn't take up a lot of space and you don't have to worry about like bringing a bigger bag with you that day. Mm -hmm. You just have like this little thing that you can open up. Um, so are you saying you'd put like the other sweater in that or something? Yeah. Like if, if you need, or if you need to like bring a sweater and an umbrella or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, cause I, I'm only going to travel with a small purse. Um, I do try and make sure that I have a small reusable water bottle, like a small hydro flask that I can fit in the bag that I'm carrying. Like that's one of the things that's taken into consideration. Like, will this fit in this mm -hmm. so that I can bring water with me? Because water is like stupid expensive for those plastic water bottles. Yes. So if I can just like fill it up in the morning and maybe not like rely on it all day, but at least if I need like a quick sip, I have water and band-aids. Traveling with band-aids in case you get like a blister oh, or yeah. one also, of the... Also, the band-aids brand Tough Strips are the best band-aids They're really ever. good. Are those the ones that are like clear? No. That like have the waterproof? No. No. I think they do make a waterproof version, but their original version, which is like a fabric, um, the, the texture of it is almost like, um, like a burlap, like it's like a weave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, once you put it on, it will not come off unless you like fuck with it and like try to peel it off and then put it back down. Yeah. If you just put it on something, that's it. That's it is impressive. the best. Yeah. They're my favorite, especially for, um, on your finger. Yep. So good. They last through like showers, washing hands. That's nice. Um, they're my favorite. Yeah. They're a little bit more expensive, but like for that kind of thing. Right. Like I, nothing is worse than having a blister and putting a Band-Aid on it and then the Band-Aid getting rolled up and, like, making a it just like blister makes on your blister. Yes. <laughs> blister inception. Yes. Yeah, I'd rather just, I mean, I know it's dramatic, amputate my own foot than deal with that. <laughs> I don't find it dramatic. We should share the, the clip of that hawk or whatever it was with the water getting sprayed onto its feet and it just screams. <laughs> That's kind of it. I mean, it's it really is, like, I, my feeling is, I want to be focused on, like, the fun stuff that I can be doing. I don't yeah. want to be focused on, like, not feeling comfortable. Or, like, if if you tend to maybe get traveler's diarrhea, like, bring something with you. Just oh, and like don't forget sunblock. Sunblock, um, which I usually will put on, like, every morning before – every time before we would go out, I would have. And I always make sure to have, like, a baseball cap, mm -hmm. sunglasses – um and a scarf so like depending on the weather hide from the cops yes yes yeah. in case i'm robbing banks <laughs> um i basically want to make sure that like if there's some kind of sudden change of weather that i can make sure that i'm comfortable because mm -hmm. really that's what all of this stuff is comfort based i make it easy to unpack because it's more comfortable for me that way i make sure that my house is relative my space is like kind of clean so when i go home i'm more comfortable <laughs> yeah um it's... That was my mom's big thing when we were kids. She was like, whenever we'd go to the Cape for a week, she'd be like crazy cleaning the house. And I mm -hmm. remember asking her like, what? Like you're cleaning yeah. like people are coming over. Right. And she was like, yeah, I don't want to come home to a mess. Yeah. Like. I want the only mess that I'm coming home with to be the stuff that I'm bringing back from yes. vacation. Yeah. Which and like even then, as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it now. Oh, I see why clean sheets are such Fair. a big deal. Yeah. So it's, um oh, another like dumb thing that is just like trial and error. Um, when we've gone to like the British Isles, England, Scotland, they are primarily tea drinkers. They will give you instant coffee crystals, which are absolutely vile. If you're a coffee, I'm definitely a coffee person. I love coffee. Can't not. Um, we, one time we flew to England and then we had a like five hour drive to get where we were going. So we'd been up for like 30 something hours we went to bed for about five hours and then had to be up early the next morning. We also got lost on our way to the Airbnb and truly a low point of my whole life. Oh, I know. It, it sounds just that feeling. Terrible. Of just like the the GPS can't find it and you just like want to sob. Um, so eventually we found it. We got about five or six hours of sleep. <laughs> got up the next morning like 6 a.m. because we had to like meet people. And I tried making my spouse and I a cup of coffee and all they had were the instant coffee crystals and a French press and I made it and he said, how is it? And I said, I can promise 
it's not the best cup of coffee that you've ever had. But I can also promise that it will be the worst cup of coffee you've ever had. <laughs> An elf when he's like, congratulations, world's best cup of coffee. Yes. Why would you use instant coffee crystals with a French press? Like that I didn't realize that they were – in. there was no other way. I was like, am I just going to put these – I didn't realize they were just going to like dissolve. I just don't know like why they gave you that combination. They were like in the kitchen. It was like all I could That's find. Crazy. So I um, through trial and error have realized – when you're flying there, bring a bag of coffee with you. Mm. Also, it's good because that takes up some space in your suitcase to give you a little bit of extra room in case you buy something while you're there. Um, but pretty much every place you'll go won't have coffee, but will have a French press. Oh, okay. Don't know why. Um, I like also, I've had the instant coffee from Starbucks. Mm -hmm. the, um, Starbucks Via. Not bad, honestly. This is um, booty flavored. It just tastes like booty. I'm just saying. If you, if you yeah. want to have instant coffee yeah. options and don't want to deal with, like, a French press yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. The, the Starbucks instant coffee is better. <laughs> we've even, um, like, if it was something where we were going to be, like, we've had trips or we're, you know, staying in a place for a couple days, going to the next place for a couple days, we'll, like, stop at a grocery store and sometimes we'll we'll pack, if it folds flat in our suitcase, like a soft cooler mm -hmm. and we'll pick up, like, yogurt and like bread and maybe like cheese and fruit um just so that like if we need or like granola bars That's what we did actually um in that tour we did because the, like the continental breakfast is like deli meats and cheeses a lot of times yeah. in europe mm -hmm. and so we would take extra mm -hmm. and have like little deli sandwiches for right. lunch and save money that way because we were poor college kids yeah and like no one's stopping me yeah so. and i've also um sometimes i'll i'll travel with those like bevita bars oh, yeah. um and the justin's those will help you poop <laughs> somebody's looking to poop <laughs> if, if you got diarrhea that'll <laughs> firm you right if up <laughs> you want something stuck in your teeth all day <laughs> bevita bars um and also like travel things of peanut butter or like almond butter yeah my mom uses the travel yep. peanut butter uh, cups a lot and it's, it was just like golf, but yeah it was really good to just in case it's a good emergency snack to you have in hungry. your backpack when you're out right. and about like have that with a travel pack of like pretzels or something yep and like, or i wish that i could like those little and i can only find them like when i'm traveling the little packets of sabra's hummus with mm, the um yes the pretzel thins yes yeah. underneath perfect like it's just such a nice so it is good i think to just like again comfort mm -hmm. plan ahead so that you're comfortable yeah if i want to just like eat a little especially if you're staying in like an airbnb where you like you know you have a fridge yeah and you may not have like food to make food in the kitchen you at least have enough to like have a cup of coffee have a little bit of something before you go don't out make, um ramen in the coffee maker don't make ramen Andy dwyer did also don't um, put carbonated beverages in a blender <laughs> because <laughs> hurtful. They... <laughs> Little story. <laughs> we were in a hotel room doing a girls' weekend, and Katie had joked. I thought it was a joke that she was going to bring a blender to make drinks, and I was like, "She's not really going to bring a blender." Ha ha ha. Girlfriend brought a full size blender. I was like, "Oh, we'll just do like sangria stuff with these." spiked seltzers yeah and uh i was like it'll be like a smoothie but you know mm -hmm. to get drunk with mm -hmm. and um to be fair it was like a four hour drive for something that should have been an hour and a half yeah and like every highway was closed for there was accidents everywhere it was... fires everywhere <laughs> sirens in the distance it's one of those ones where you're like is this the beginning of like last of us that is exactly what i asked you when yes. we were in the pool because it smelled like burning, and there was a siren. Yep. <laughs> was and like, there was a storm coming. Are we about to did, die? Did we die? And then that sex worker got way close to the car. And <gasps> then we were on our way to the restaurant. I don't think anybody <laughs> breathed for a minute. Um, but yeah, Katie brought a whole ass blender into this hotel room and poured some we of those truly. so many bags for that trip. <laughs> I felt like a Sherpa going up to that room, and I was sweating by the time we got there i was carrying so many fucking bags it was it was insane it was our first attempt at doing anything after covid yes so, so everybody was bad at it mm -hmm. 
And also at that point, we're only going to be gone for one night. One night. I had <laughs> I started with the edibles real early, so I was. Whew. We had fun in the pool. We did. <laughs> and Katie um, forgot how her legs worked, and um, <laughs> she at one point I was like, "I'm gonna have some more." Uh, of this chocolate bar edibles do you want any and she was like yep give me 10 milligrams and i was like are you sure yep she was so so confident and then her legs stopped working it wasn't my fault the pool made them numb <laughs> so that's our travel tips <laughs> travel with edibles no i'm kidding don't do that um i feel like that's most of i was trying to like type it i was thinking about like how i prep for a trip I'm like, I feel like that's like most of my, of course there will be things that I'll remember in an hour and I'll be like, oh shit, I should have included that, yeah. that I'll forget. But that's what, you know, comments on our post about for this episode yeah. will be for. Yeah. So yeah. Tell us if you have, um, yeah, tell us your travel tips. You're like, cause that's, these are just like my survival tips for a trip. Those are just like how I don't freak out. <laughs> um, nah, it's not foolproof. <laughs> 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 don't you worry the freakouts are still built in <laughs> yeah like when it's hot and you're in a loud place and you haven't eaten anything but you've had a full beer that will make things worse so don't do that uh, make sure you know where you're going to eat and you have snacks in case you get hungry and remember to plan ahead and enjoy your trip yeah the bar is ankle high bye bye, bye.